Robert. Hello. Uh, thank you for. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to speak to you a little while ago. I do do I do apologise for that. All right. That, that's okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at three things. Um, in the Watchtower publications, I've been on JW.org today. I go to a sort of cafe place where you've got free free Wi-Fi. I've been looking at three things. The first is theocracy, the claim that the Watchtower Society claims that it's the theocracy established in the year 1919. The second is the term true Christian, which I found in quite a lot of publications. And I think by true Christians, they're talking about themselves, not Baptists or Methodists or Catholics or Protestants. True Christians, I think, I refer to Jehovah's Witnesses in the, the Watchtower. And the third thing would be the phrase Christendom and, and what you've said about Christian churches. Um, I mean, some of the comments are rather insulting about the Christian churches. Right. So what, what kind of comments do you find insulting about Christian churches? Well, um, for instance, the, the Awake for the 22nd of April 1993, page 6, says the churches are pawns of Satan. Right. Okay. And and Christendom is said to be a part of the false, the harlot false religion, and the Watchtower, fifteenth of July two thousand and thirteen, page thirteen, paragraph thirteen. I yeah. can go on with other similar things. Um, yeah. Uh, it just shocked 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 me a little bit. Um, I mean, for instance, nineteen seventy five yearbook says, "quote Satan has used the Protestants and Catholics to destroy God's remnant." Yes. Um, so I, so those are the three things really I, I've been looking at. Um, thank you for your help. It's really um, theocracy, um, the term true Christian, and then the phrase Christendom. Thank you. Right. Um, so uh, it depends how, how deeply or how shallow you, you want to go on the subject of Christendom. Um, Christendom's track record shows, well, Christendom we define as the realm of so-called Christianity in uh, brackets. So um, when you look at the history of Christendom, uh, what do you think about it? I'm, I'm, I'm really only interested in your literature. I'm looking at the term theocracy, that you claim that you were appointed by Jesus Christ in the year 1919. I'm looking at the term true Christian in your literature, and then I'm looking at the phrase Christendom. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to comment until I understand what I'm talking about. If I said, I want you to tell me what you think about nuclear fission, yes. okay, you'd be very foolish to say, well, blah, 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 if you don't know what you're talking about. It's best to actually say, yeah. hold on, Robert, give me a week. I'm going to go and look at some encyclopedias. I'm going to find out what nuclear fission is. I'll get back to you next week so I know what I'm talking about. And I'll yes. prepare. Well, theocracy, God rule. Um, so you, you, you have, when I say you, we, uh, humans, have, humans have a choice in life. They can either do things um, the way it's outlined in Scripture. Uh, if they do that, then they're, then they're living by theocratic rules. That's how we view it. That's the basis of it. So any organisation, when I say any, uh, we're talking about an organisation that adheres as closely as possible to reveal truth from God's word. We would say that that organisation is theocratic. Um, like the Mormon Church and the Catholic Church and the Christadelphians and the Way International, because there's plenty no. of groups that claim that they are the theocracy appointed by God. Well, the Mormons the say you, the, the Mormons yeah. say that God God appointed them in the year 1830. Victor yeah. Paul Whirlwell well, of the Way Thank International. Yeah. Can I just finish? Yeah. Victor Paul Whirlwell oh. of the Way International says God appointed the the, the Way International as his uh, sole channel of communication on earth in the 1950s. So that there's plenty of you can turn on Christian TV and listen to these TV preachers who fly around the world in jets. That's right. God's always they appointed the claim, them. They? Yeah, they make the claim, don't they, that uh, they are, they are theocratic, they are God ruled. Well, my answer to that would be. How does that claim match up to what Scripture says? Well, that's my point. None of the groups that make this claim justify their claim and can prove their claim. They just keep on making yeah. claims. Well, that's what impressed me. See, I was Church of England. 
Yeah. And that's what impressed me about uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. I didn't want to know anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, thank you very much. Um, but I just viewed them as another sect. I wasn't particularly religious. I believed there was a God, but um, any claim that any religion on earth worshipped that God correctly was, you know, that's a bit beyond my comprehension. But after examining, my brother told me all about these things many years ago, and he just said, look, don't listen to what I say, that's my brother, mm-hmm. don't listen to what a vicar or a priest of any kind says, check out God's word. So that's what I did, I, I made a, uh, an analysis of God's word, as you have, yeah. and, but, and when we did so, I found that there are so many basic things where uh, the churches of Christendom fall short, and that's why um, it's a bit like, just to use a, perhaps a crude illustration, um, if I want to um, find out what's genuine money, it's no use looking at all the false money that's available, counterfeit. You're best finding out what real money's like, and when you know what real money's like, then you can check out and you will know straight away what's not. And that's basically the, the rule of thumb for uh, God's word. If, if there is, that's the genuine article, and if it doesn't match up to God's word, then it's not the real money. It doesn't, uh, it, it, that religion is not based theocratically. That's how we feel about it. Um, and when you examine just the basic teachings of much of, well, I would say of all the churches outside of Jehovah's organization, they fall short in so many areas. And, you know, if you examine Belief in the Bible. Um, oh, yes, I believe the Bible will say the Methodists. Do you believe in Adam and Eve? No, we don't. Do you believe in the flood of Noah Day? No, we don't. Uh, the Genesis accounts are just allegories and so on. So when you match up those things um, against what the scriptures say, just using Methodism as an example, uh, they don't uh, match up. Are you saying they don't that... match up to what God's word says. Are you saying that every single Methodist and every single Anglican, without exception, deny the truth of Adam and Eve and Noah's flood? No. What I would say is that uh, there are many. Um, I remember we, uh, I, I used to uh, call on a lady uh, near to where we live, and she, was at, um, she went to the local Church of England. And we were discussing the subject of Adam and Eve, and I asked her if she believed in Adam and Eve, and she said, I certainly do. And I said, well, I know that your minister doesn't because I called on your minister and we had a conversation and she was quite shocked. I said, if you, your minister, his words to me were, if, if I got up in front of my congregation and said, Adam and Eve were real people, I would be laughed out of the pulpit. And he echoed the thoughts of not just himself, but the general consensus of the Church of England. And that I find very disturbing that you have a so-called man of the cloth who's teaching supposed to be teaching what God's word says and he doesn't believe it himself as number one. Some of his parishioners do, which is very disappointing for them, but they go along with that as a, as a class. Um, they just follow along, which is what I do. Um, well, Jesus referred to Adam and Eve, um, so yes. Jesus specifically can refer to that. Um, your, your, your literature, when I was on the JW.org site, the Watchtower for the 15th of July 2013, Watchtower, I don't know the page number, it's between pages 9 and 14. Uh, paragraph 6 and paragraph 12 both speak about the appointment of a theocratic organisation in the year 1919. Yes. And then footnote four on page 14 talks about a change in the calculation of this 1919 date. It's no longer calculated from uh, 1918 to 1919, but now from 1914 to 1919. Right. So it, it talks about a theocratic organisation appointed in the year 1919. Yes. Okay. What do you want to know about that then, Robert? Um, would that be the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York? Um, that was the tool, if you like, that was used at that time. The theocratic organisation was based around um, a group of brothers that uh, prior to 1919 had been imprisoned. They were the leaders of, well, when I say leaders, I use that term very loosely, 
uh, they were the ones, the organisers of the of the organisation, the ones that we would now call today the governing body. And I'm 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 here. Hi. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Again, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Something happened there, didn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so where were we? So, yes, we believe, and you'd have to, again, I remember using this illustration with you before, it's rather like um, trying to do a jigsaw and having a piece, you, you, you're putting together pieces of the jigsaw and you're getting in little pieces around the edge and you can't get the full picture. So I don't mean you can't, I mean you can't at the present time. Um, it's rather like the illustration you used about uh, nuclear fission or whatever it was at the outset. Um, we believe that quite a few scriptures were fulfilled from the book of Revelation and the book of Malachi around the years 1914 through 19. And uh, that's basically uh, in harmony with the scripture. I think it's a copy of 181 the light gets brighter and brighter. Well, it's actually uh, the path of the righteous which gets brighter and brighter right, in yes. Proverbs 14, right. not light. The path of the righteous, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just that and it's got nothing to do with doctrine. It's nothing to do with changing doctrine. It's, it's a contrast between verse 18 and 19. People who are obedient yeah. to God, the path of their path gets more illuminated as they're obedient to God. And the wicked yes. who are not obedient to God, they stumble in darkness in verse 19. So yes. it's nothing I, to I, do I with um, doctrines or new beliefs. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd have no. to apply that to every group. You'd say the Catholics would be true Christians and the Mormons are true Christians and the Seventh-day Adventists are true Christians. Everyone's a true Christian because the light gets brighter and brighter for them, too. If the light gets brighter well, and brighter for you, light gets brighter yeah. and brighter for them as well. So everyone's well, in the right. Everyone's part well, of Jehovah's organisation because everyone's got agree. light getting brighter and brighter. Yeah, I can't agree with that at all. Because, well, I can't uh, agree with that either. It's plainly ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, we, but... You see, like, we, when, when our, our organisation has, has seen the need for change, when they've examined Scripture and found out that what they were teaching wasn't in harmony with God's word, and more truth is revealed as time goes on, in harmony with Jesus' words. I have many things yet to tell you, not able to bear them at present, and other texts. Uh, then they've been willing to change. Christendom has stayed the same. They still believe in hellfire. They still believe that you have an immortal soul. Um, still... You need to That's prove all. that to me. If these doctrines are wrong, rather than machine gun me, you'd need to. we need to speak again and look at one single topic at a time. Yes. Which I'd be happy to do. Which I'd be happy to do. That, you've got the, um, you've got the Bible. What do, what does the Bible teach? Book. I've read which it. Which is available on the website. Yes. I've I've read it. Well, if it is that you've read that book, Robert, and you feel that there isn't sufficient information there to know what's what, um, I can't see that I can help you anymore. Well, it really no. it really avoids all the the best proof text used by Trinitarians. The book gives a very slanted, inaccurate view of the Trinitarian position. It misses out their best their, their best arguments. You know, um, yeah, I, I know that you've got a thing about uh, this form of Trinity that, you know, I, I simply don't agree with and I, I could never uh, uh, agree with after checking the things that I've checked with regards to the Trinity. It's history, where it came from, everything to do with it. I've checked all that the same as you. I've looked at all the words for God and for Theos and for Son of. Jesus never called himself God the Son. He was always the Son of God. I'm going to your Father and my Father. So it falls flat on its face. There are many things that Jesus uh, didn't know. No one knows the day you're, of the you're, hour. You're machine gunning me. You're machine gunning me with arguments. Yeah, I'd be quite well, happy to discuss it on another evening. If you gave me time yeah, to prepare I'm and we agreed to discuss to one topic. I know if you've read that book, if you've read that book with an honest heart, and if you still believe the Trinity, I cannot see I can help you. Well, of course I did. Uh, the, the book doesn't even address the Trinity. It doesn't address well, what educated Trinitarians yeah. believe. It gives very silly, very full of frivolous arguments which are irrelevant to the doctrine yeah. of the Trinity. 
Um, could well, I go on to the second part after theocracy, which is the term true Christians? Yes. Um, looking at your literature on JW.org, um, yeah. it says that you must come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. That's the Watchtower for the 15th of November, 1981, page 21. Yes. And while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. Yes. I, so, thought, I thought we went to a person for salvation to Christ. Um, surely, it's the, surely it's the position of the Mormons and the Catholics. Um, well, the, the medieval Catholic Church, I don't know about the Catholic Church today, possibly, but certainly the medieval catholic church the mormons the way international they all teach the same thing you must go to their religious organization for salvation there's, yeah. there's no uh, salvation in mormonism unless you go to the mormon church because the yeah. grace of god is mediated through the mormon church which is really what the catholic churches teach today through the seven sacraments though i must point out not every catholic believes that there are some catholics who yeah. disagree with um traditional some aspects of traditional catholic doctrine not every catholic believes in transubstantiation or that you know yeah. babies are regenerated when they're baptized by the priest and sprinkled with water um, yes. to be quite fair to them so, but the but the official position is you must go to the catholic church for salvation and yes. the mormons say you must go to the mormon church for salvation i'm just pointing out this watchtower seems to be yeah. saying the same thing of the Jehovah's Witnesses. You go to the Jehovah's Witness organization for salvation. Um, well, it, it, from, from the first century example, if you wanted salvation, uh, no one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus' words, so you've got to go through Jesus. And uh, that salvation, he, he directed people, and the apostles and uh, the disciples always directed people and lived in accord with revealed truth through the then um, 12 apostles. Uh, which they passed their thoughts down, directed by Jesus Christ in the first century to the congregations. And when the congregations received that information, if you look in Acts 15 and 16, Acts 16 shows that uh, they were blessed um, by being in harmony with the beliefs that they were expounded by to the disciples of Jesus Christ. So they all came together as a united body, as a congregation. So we, just as the first century organization was made up of various congregations, but united by, um, Excuse uh, me. then we would call it, a governing body that uh, oversaw the preaching and teaching work. So today, just as there's only, as well, back in Noah's day, there was only one art built. You either helped him build it and got any with him, if you had a relationship with God, you won't know it. If you had a relationship with God in the first century, before Jesus came, you had to join the um, Jewish organization that Jehovah was using. And you, you've talked so remember. much, I've forgotten what my original question is. You've just talked and talked and talked and gone multiple points, and I, I'm sorry, I've lost the track of what, well, what uh, my question the point, was. The point that you're making was, uh, 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 have you got to go to... The organization of Jehovah's Witnesses to get salvation. Yeah, you've I mean, got to come to know God. You've got to get to know Him through His Son Jesus Christ. Take in knowledge, and that knowledge would lead to the point of dedication, baptism, and align yourself with the organization that we believe is being used as the theocratic one theocratic organization on earth that's doing God's will. There's there's and nothing in the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that says there is a theocratic organization on earth and we must go to that theocratic organization for salvation. Well, yes, I remember now, it's the Watchtower. Oh, I want to talk. Can you interrupt me? It's the, wa it's the Watchtower for the 15th of November, 1981, page 21, which says, and while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organization for salvation. Yes. It's best to do one yes. thing at a time, not, not machine gun multiple points. So what did you say next? I think well, we believe that that organization is God directed through the governing body, through there's, Christ there's, Jesus. There's no the verse that body. says that. There's no verse which says we have to look for an organization. Christ said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, um, come I can't I can't quote it, I'm getting a bit frustrated. Matthew yeah. eleven twenty eight, come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say look for an organization 
and I'll give you rest through that organization or the organization will give you rest. It's come to me, come to Jesus. Jesus is the one who gives us rest. And the rest there pictures the Sabbath rest, the fourth commandment, the Sabbath rest, that our eternal rest is in Christ. He's the one who gives salvation, not some organization. I don't need to go to some medieval Catholic pope and fall on my knees and kiss the papal ring and kiss the pope's foot. And then the priest will give me the little bit of bread that's transformed into the body and blood of Jesus. And I don't and I don't need to go to the Mormon church. I don't need to go through the Mormon temple system. I don't need to find some Mormon bishop who lays hands on me and blesses me and gives me the Melchizedek priesthood or something like that. I don't need yeah. the Victor Paul Werwell and the Way International. I don't need Scientology. I don't need some lunatic TV preacher who flies the route around the world in a multi-million dollar jet. I don't yeah. need the Pope. I, do, I, I, you go, the Bible says you go to Christ. And Christ right. doesn't operate through an organization. We go to Christ uh, well, directly. If he, if he doesn't, then I'm in the wrong organisations, or all, all that I can say. Mm. I think you quoted Matthew twenty four forty five, which is just a parable. Yeah. It's simply 45 a to 47, yeah. It's simply a contrast between a faithful servant in verse forty five yeah. and an unfaithful servant, um, who's mentioned uh, in verse forty eight. Of course, this is okay. after Jesus talking about the end times. And what's going to happen yes. in the end times and so to illustrate that he's not telling us about the formation of some organization he's just telling us a little a little story a little parable to illustrate well, the fact I'm, that, I'm, that, I'm that we, you've been oh, lying well, that's not what i believe i'm afraid uh, i don't think it wasn't all parables were given so that uh, those that wanted to search could find the answers and I believe you better have. If you don't believe that, and if you fully believe what you just stated to me, you're wasting your time talking to me. And I don't mean that in a horrible way. You know, if you are happy with what you've got and you don't think that God has an organisation on earth that is using it this time... Well, of course not. There's, there's no verse going. that says that. There's no Bible verse well, that says it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there is. I have all the sheep not of this fold. Oh, you go on, you go on to another God. verse. You're machine gunning me with another verse now. That's referring, that's John 10, 7, 16 or 17. That's referring that's to right. the Gentiles who are coming in. Jesus was preaching to Jews yes. and he says he's got yes, other he sheep who are going to come the in. Yeah. 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 And, about it, and he's he referring said. to the ingathering of the Gentiles in Acts chapter that's 10. Right. And he yes. says there will be one. Interrupt me again. What, no, what's, he, what's he gathering them into? He's gathering them into one flock, one shepherd. He puts them in a pen together. He looks after them unitedly. Yes, Jew and, and Jesus, Gentile. Jesus said to Peter, shepherd my flock. Yes, Jew so and... So that flock would be united together yeah. as one organisation. Um, could I just point out, in Matthew 24, the faithful servant is appointed after his master's return. That's right. Right. Um, we believe that was 1914 when he returned, but he was appointed in so 1990. Christ came back to this earth in 1914, are you saying that? No, he came back in the heavenly realm and took up kingdom power in 1914. He came to rule, Psalm 110, in the midst of his enemies. What do you mean? And he, yeah, that's Psalm 110 verse 2. Um, yeah. What do you mean he, he came back to the heavenly realm in 1914? He sat at his father's right hand, according to Psalm 110, until Jehovah placed his enemies as a stool for his feet. The time, the appointed times of the nations, we believe that that time ran out in 1914. And you time, said that Christ the, returned. The your, no, your exact words were, you said Christ returned to heaven in 1914. No, but no, if that, Christ... Well, that's, that was, that, that that's what you said. Time. Christ returned was given heavenly power in 1914. It's not what you said. You said Christ returned well, to, to the heavenly up, realms in 1914. Yeah. Yeah. I said you'll have to forgive me for saying that then. Okay. Uh, what, what I meant to say was he went to heaven after he left the earth in the first century. He went to heaven. He sat at his father's right hand symbolically mm. until 1914. He then received kingly power. No, he Psalm didn't. No, he didn't. He said all well, I'm, I'm authority. Saying, could I, could I, could I please speak? He said in Matthew twenty-eight eighteen. Then Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, "All authority has been—that's a past tense. 
given to me in heaven and on earth. So Christ didn't receive any power in 1914. He has all power in both heaven and earth given to him. Given. Let me finish. Please let me finish. Please let me finish. Come on. Come on, buddy. It was being given to him, and that's a past tense, at yeah. his resurrection, according to Matthew twenty-eight well, eighteen. That's true. We believe that. Right, but but the, going back to Matthew twenty-four, assuredly I say to you that he will make him ruler over his goods. If you take this parable about the faithful and wise servant literally, then he's yeah. made a ruler after his master's return. Now Christ hasn't yeah. returned to this planet yet. Christ is going to come yeah. back to this planet at the Battle of Armageddon, isn't he? Right. So if there is a faithful and wise servant, that faithful and wise servant is going to be appointed after Armageddon. Because in the yeah. parable, the faithful and wise servant is appointed by the master after the master goes away. And then when the master comes back and finds that that's a good servant who's done well, after the master's yeah. return back home, that's when he's going to make him a ruler over his goods. So if this yeah, is to be I taken literally... The faithful and discreet slave has not been appointed yet. It, it will be appointed if this is literal after Armageddon when Christ returns to this planet. Well, uh, you will have to believe that and I'll have to believe what I believe because we believe that took place in 1914. Simple as that. But I actually read the verse. I went to the trouble of reading the verse. In 1919. But I went to the trouble of reading the verse. I actually yes, read no the man. verse. Blessed is that, look, let, 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 me, let me read it, because we should try and follow the Bible. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant who his master, when he comes, will find so doing. When he comes, yes. assuredly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. So yeah. while the master's been away, he's a faithful servant. At the master's return, he's going to make him a, a ruler over all of his goods. That's because right. you see, there's also an evil servant who was ruler over some of his goods, verse 48. Yep. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at an hour when he is not aware of, and he will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There yes. will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So the portion that the evil servant was ruling over is going to be given to the faithful servant. And that's at the master's return. Well, I understand what you're saying and I, I uh, appreciate the information. But all I will say is, you, why on earth... The conversation that we're having isn't a question of... See, I don't need to be taught what I believe. I know what I believe and I've thoroughly checked it. We've just had a conversation about... Uh, and I could... I could uh, rant on, uh, you know, and give you my version of what we think uh, happened in 1914 and how and why Jesus appointed the slave then. But but, 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 but you do not believe uh, do you, uh, you do not believe Jesus returned to this planet in the year 1914. He's you, never coming back. He's never coming back. So you deny the second coming of Christ. No, no, he's coming back invisibly. He's already present. How could you have an invisible second true. coming? That 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 was a, that was a crazy scheme invented by Adventists to cover up the fact that William Miller's lunatic claim that the second coming of Christ was to happen in 1844 when Christ didn't return in 1844 the Adventists who didn't leave had a problem so what did they do well chiefly the Seventh Day Adventists came up with this crazy idea that Jesus did a work in heaven that was invisible. It was called investigative judgment. He did it in the year 1844. So really, they say, the second, the second coming of Christ kind of did take place, but it's a second coming that took place in heaven invisibly where no one can see it and no one can check up on it. And all that happened was Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. have adopted something similar to that. You have an invisible second coming that can't be checked, and it's an invisible second coming to heaven, similar to investigative right. judgment in Seventh-day Adventism. Well, we must Why does your awake for the 22nd of April 1993, page 6, call the churches pawns of Satan? Because they are. All of them? Yes. Including the Anglican Church? Yes, particularly the 
Anglican Church. And what about the head of the Anglican Church? Would the Anglican Church they, also they, be a pawn of Satan? They've, they've all got a very, very uh, heavy responsibility before God. Yes. That they have not yes. Would, the would, the, would the head of the Anglican Church also be a pawn of Satan? Well, he, he, whether he's uh, a good man or it's a not bad a he. Man, it, it's know. not a he. It's well, a she. Whoever. Her well, Majesty no, the Queen. He, could, I, could I talk, well, please? The answer, the answer to that is, she wouldn't think so, and she she wouldn't know. The same as the political leaders don't know that they are pawns of Satan. They think they've got their own independent rulerships, and she does. And is but the head of the Church of England a pawn of Satan? Well, you asked me that the last time. I would say she needs to check what God's word says about politics, religion, and whether the two should mix, and whether she should be adhering to what the Bible says rather than what the Church of England teaches. And anyone that doesn't adhere to it is basically like John eight forty four. Um, the Watchtower for the fifteenth of July two thousand and thirteen, page thirteen. I found this today, paragraph thirteen. It talks about the Christendom, which I think they mean Protestant and Catholic churches. It says the Christendom is a part of the harlot, which is false religion. Yes. Would that be all of the Protestant and Catholic churches? Yes. All right. Um, the 1975 yearbook on page 98 says, quote, Satan has used the Protestants and Catholics to destroy God's remnant. Yes. Check out history. You'll find that he has. Yeah. Check out what, ha what happened during the Second World War. Yeah, during the Second World War, Jehovah's Witnesses were producing arms. They were producing military aircraft for the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation. The Watchtower itself admits to that. The Watchtower wow. itself admits that in the 1940s, during the Second World War, Jehovah's Witnesses were supporting the military. Can I just read to you the Watchtower for the 1st of June, 1947, page 173? So this is two no. years after the end of the Second World War. Robert, Robert, yeah. no. I know all about what's what and what they did and what they haven't done. They haven't taken the stand that Christians took where they've drawn weapons and slaughtered one another. They, the grand... they were worse than that because they oh. would not fight in the, the, um, the wars but they were quite happy to produce military aircraft and military equipment. It says in the 1947 Watchtower, 1st of June, 173, they were working in machine shops producing instruments of war, and that's working for Mr. Taylor, who was a Jehovah's Witness, very wealthy Jehovah's Witness. He owned the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation on Australia, and this Watchtower admits that Jehovah's Witnesses who went for Bethel service, some of them worked in, quote, machine shops producing instruments of war, and by that they mean they were working for Mr. Taylor in the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation, which up until 1945, for the duration of the Second World War, this is only in Australia, this is not America, it's talking about the situation in Australia, um, yeah. They were producing during the Second World War military aircraft for the Australian aircraft, uh, Air what, Force. What did, what, did you, what did he do about that? Did he just say, ooh, let's carry on producing them? But who was he to Well, the war that ended in. Went, the, was this one or two or was that they managed to dig out? Or was this thousands and thousands of witnesses? Because thousands and thousands of witnesses would not go to war, would not wear uniforms, would not shoot a bullet, would not make bullets. They were sent to the concentration camps and they were gassed. And so while that gone. happened in Australia in the Second World War, Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses who went for Bethel service ended up working in machine shops producing okay. instruments of war. And it goes on, the article goes on, or serving soldiers in canteens. That means canteens on yeah. military basis. Yeah. So, well, whether they did or did that, that um, all that I know is that the, the, uh, the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses have nothing to do with and have had nothing to do no. with. It's the, the Quakers. It's the Quakers who are pacifist. 
It's the well, Christadelphians okay. who are pacifists. Jehovah's Witnesses well, why, are not Robert, pacifists. Why are you telling me these things, though? I'm not really interested. I, I know the history. And because, you know, no, you I, don't. I, I no, you don't. Is. Because today, Jehovah's Witnesses, your leaders, your governing body, get share dividends from arms companies, such as arms, share dividends from Boeing and Northrop Grumman through the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. All you need to do is go to the IRS tax records and look up the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. So tell me this then, Robert, one final thing. Why are you interested in telling me these things? I thought you were seeking the truth. You tried to convert me to your singular belief where you don't uh, need an I, I'm, I haven't said that much about what I believe. I did quote Matthew eleven twenty eight, well, which I is what I believe. Oh, you interrupt me again. I can't finish the sentence. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You won't, won't be having another sentence with you. Uh, you've got what you believe. You are happy with it. And I'm very happy with what I've got. I've got a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. You don't. And if every witness on the face of the planet was killed, it wouldn't make any difference. I, my, my wife and I would carry on as Jehovah's Witnesses. And that basically is it. You won't convert me. Uh, you certainly won't by giving me any slander or any... I quoted so your literature. I've accurately quoted your literature. I've given you page well, numbers and the page references. I've read the literature, Robert, from, from 1979 onwards and everything back that I could put my hands on. Do you know... So I'm not interested in it. Do you know that... I know that I've got an organisation that's doing its very best to follow Christ. And if they're wrong, if they're wrong, then we will be punished for it. You if will. If we're right, then you are going to lose out in one massive way. I want you to look out for this. But we leave you with this. You don't stop you talking, long. do you? You don't no, stop talking. I don't, I don't. Generally, I would have walked away from it. If I'd have been on a doorway, I'd have walked away a long time ago. All right. I, let, I, let me... Let me let me have a word in Edgeway. Come on, this this isn't fair. Are you aware no, that in right. are you I'm aware that in the First World War, Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged in the Watchtower magazine for the fifteenth yes, of May, nineteen eighteen, to support yeah. the American military in the First World War? I certainly am aware of that. Yes. yes. They were they and were told were to buy. That went into battle and they went and they, they wouldn't take up arms a lot. They were told to, to buy Liberty oh, bonds or Liberty loans in the Watchtower. Yes. Zion's Watchtower, fifteenth yes. of May, nineteen eighteen, page six thousand two hundred and fifty-seven of the reprints. Robert, I know. Why are you telling me? Already because know. it's hypocrisy. You're not yeah, pacifist. You you the the, the Quakers now. are pacifist. The Christadelphians are pacifist. They don't get yeah. share dividends from arms companies as your governing body does today. You've been involved okay. in getting money, uh, money for the military for the last hundred years. It says yeah. in this watchtower from 1918, um, members of our association who have some personal means have bought liberty bonds, including tabernacle workers who are paying 25% of their monthly allowance to purchase a bond. And it, it talks elsewhere about the liberty bond and it says um, how the International Bible Students Association approves of people buying liberty bonds or liberty loans, which was essentially loaning money to the American government during the First World War to finance the, the American military in the First World War. That's not pacifism. You might not pick up guns and fight, but you're quite happy to get involved in the money side of war, which to me is total hypocrisy. Well, that's what we are, then. We must be hypocrites. Well, so, I, think uh, you, I think that your leaders are. I certainly would not say that of you, sir, but I think that the governing body certainly are hypocrites. Well, you've got old are, Anthony... You've got old Anthony Morris... I've done, I've done now, Robert. I, I will not phone you again, and I do not want you to phone me because... Uh, if I want the truth, I feel I've got it. You feel you've got your truth, and um, you and the massive organisation that you belong to, I'm sure that Jehovah will look after you. Uh, on that note, goodbye. Bye-bye.